<laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. It's me, Scott, from HostGator. And in this episode of Hosted, I'll share with you the top five Google Analytics data points to help track the success of your website. And stick around for the end of the episode. Our analytics master, Andy, will show us how using Google Analytics to create a sales funnel is a piece of cake. Mmm. <laughs> sales funnel cake. Mmm. A little powdered sugar. Tracking info on your visitors and their behavior on your site is a super important component of running a good website. With proper tracking, you can optimize SEO, capture more sales, and learn what things to focus on to maximize engagement. For information on how to set up Google Analytics, check out the link in the description. Once you're set up, you're off to the races and we'll be able to gather tons of data. And in this episode, I'll cover the five most important categories of data that Google Analytics gives you, all buttoned up, nice and purdy. If you have any questions about these categories or any other Google Analytics questions, let me know in the comments. And if you find this info helpful, give us a like and a subscribe. <laughs> Number one, how many people visit your site? This is the most basic data set Google Analytics will provide. Knowing how many unique visitors, returning visitors, and page visits you have lets you know how popular you are, like candygrams on Valentine's Day in high school. <laughs> I, I got one. <laughs> Total, like over all four years, just one. Wow. Yeah. Google Analytics tracks users, the number of unique individuals who visit your site, sessions, the number of total visits, including returning visitors, new versus returning visitors, page visits or visits to particular pages, and visits per date and time, so you can see when and for how long your visitors are visiting. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? Got it? Yeah. Will you guys say it back to me? Number two, how people are finding your site. Knowing how your visitors are discovering your content might help you adjust how you're advertising or where to focus your outreach efforts. If all of your traffic is coming from direct links and none from search engines, maybe you need to improve your SEO. Or if all of your traffic is coming from your mom's house, maybe you should improve your life. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> your mom joke, take that. <laughs> Google Analytics can track data on organic search or what terms people are searching and what search engines they're using to end up on your site. Direct, who is just typing in your site URL. Social, what social media sites are sending traffic your way. And referral traffic, or what other sites are sharing eyeballs by posting a link to your site. Number three, who is visiting your site? Through the magic of the internet, Google Analytics can track key demographic information that can again help you focus your efforts. If all your traffic is coming from Canada, maybe double down on that poutine content. <laughs> Google Analytics can track basic demographics, age and gender, Geography, where in the world your traffic is coming from. Devices and browsers, what are your users using to find you on the net. And even interest similarities, or other stuff your users are interested in based on their search and browser history. A lot of poutine content coming my way. <laughs> Love searching for it. Never had it, but I'm curious. <laughs> Number four, what people do on your site. Using Google Analytics to track your user's behavior will have you feeling like Van Pelt from Jumanji. <laughs> but without the silly hat and penchant for hunting man. <laughs> With this info, you'll be able to deduce what is and isn't working on your site, is the structure optimized, and is the messaging clear. Google Analytics tracks things like bounce rate, session duration, and pages per session, behavior flow, exit pages, and events. Number five, how many users convert? In a perfect world, on a perfect website, all of your visitors convert to taking action on your site in exactly the way you want, like submitting a contact sheet or subscribing to your poutine subscription service. Yay! That would that'd be really great. I don't know how you'd ship it. Tracking conversion does take a few extra steps, but here to explain what this means and how to also incorporate a sales funnel is my good friend, Andy. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Hey, Scott, how's it going? Great. So what is a sales funnel and how do I get one? So a sales or conversion funnel is a phrase commonly used in marketing to describe the journey a consumer takes before ultimately converting. Now, the metaphor of a funnel is used to describe the way users are guided to the goal across multiple steps. In the case of an e-commerce website, a simple funnel could be comprised of the following. A user reaches the home page, they proceed to a product page, they add something to their cart, and then ultimately they convert or they reach the thank you page. Now, sales funnels give you immediate insight into any major area of frictions within this funnel um, and your customer experience. So, if, for example, you see that there's a big drop-off between the number of 
people that are visiting the home page and proceeding to the product page, you can focus on this step and experiment with different calls to actions, locations of the call to actions, your product page nav layout, or even the content on that product page to try to improve the retention of users into the next step. Now, sales funnels can also be applied to any action you want your visitor to take. It doesn't have to be a transaction. It can include signing up for a newsletter or submitting a contact form. There's a couple of ways to do this in Google Analytics, actually. You can use goals, enhance e-commerce steps, but my preferred method is segments. Now, the reason is their flexibility and their control. For those of you who are new to Google Analytics, segments are essentially just a sequence of conditions or filters that allow us to see the users that have taken a specific action that we're interested in. These segments, therefore, allow us to identify the users that have progressed down each of the steps in the funnel, as well as friction points, which we can then address to make our website better. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. No problem. And there you have it, the top five things you should pay attention to on Google Analytics. In our next episode, Mike and I do a poutine taste test. A whole flight. Poutine. It's just going to be fun. OK, bye. Hey, Mike, uh, Mike, are you a fan of poutine? I've had it twice, both times in Canada. Oh, really? Oh, that makes and sense. Also, I had it, the interesting part is that I had it at a McDonald's. They have poutine at McDonald's? In and Canada? they do in Canada. I love Canada. Which just validates the whole joke of this episode. I love it.